is pretty warm out here and my photographer is running late so I'm going to take this time to get through a video concept I've been thinking about for a bit. Um, in 2015 I went through officer candidate school for the Marine Corps. Um, it's, it's a similar environment to boot camp but you have not signed a contract. Um, it's a probation training period and the attrition rate for men I think is 50% and for women it's 70%. So they're trying to get you to quit and go home. So it's a very interesting experience. Um, really formative for me. A lot of things I've learned from that that I'm so grateful for. Um, but I don't talk about it much because I didn't do any active duty and people who did actually serve um, are going to feel about that differently than um, people who didn't and they're also the ones to whom it's going to mean more so I generally speaking don't share it unless there's context but there are some really great things that I learned that I want to share so hence this video um, the first one was that any decision is better than no decision because when you make a decision you're gonna get more information and that more information will tell you if you made the right decision or not so as long as you're not making decisions that aren't totally irreversible, it's better to just choose one, see what happens, and then alter course based on that. So I would say the first one is it cured me of indecisiveness. Um, the next thing after that I learned is that how you present yourself matters. The details matter, how you carry yourself matters, how you interact with the people around you, all of that matters. If you are only concerned with yourself and selfish and generally speaking don't put effort into taking care of what's around you people just won't like you very much it's really the simplest way I can put that man um, the next thing I learned is that you can't do anything alone there was a time okay so you've got we'll say 60 girls in the platoon Okay, or guys, whatever, but in, in my case, we're in a female platoon, so you got 60 girls in the platoon, and you have a foot locker at the end of each one of the bunks, so that's 60 foot lockers with a padlock on it, okay? And I remember one day, the staff sergeants were pissed off over something, you know, that's the nature of being there, and so they took all the padlocks off and locked them and threw them in the middle of uh, the squad bay, and then left it to the candidates to figure out whose lock was whose and get them all back on. I think they were like, okay, all these locks better be back on in the next 15 minutes or you're doing some miserable punishment for the next week, okay? And that challenge was not something that anyone could have done alone. So in case you haven't put it together, here's the solution to that puzzle. Uh, the solution is either everyone takes a lock and tries each one of the 60 combinations in turn until they find the right combination and then they write that combination down or um, everybody grabs a lock and tries their combination and you just rotate but the point is unless every single person is doing a lock continuously at the same time you won't solve this puzzle um, and there are so many things in life that are like that where cooperation just gets you so much farther and the thing that ties into this is that in order to get people to cooperate you have to have some sort of authority figure so I think another takeaway here is that it made me comfortable becoming that authority figure in a situation that needed it where someone wasn't already stepping up it made me comfortable stepping into a leadership position out of necessity because that's always the driver, right? It's necessity. It's not, oh, I want to, to lead in this scenario. Because oftentimes, leading comes with a responsibility that could have negative fallout. So, at least for me, stepping into that role is always out of necessity. Okay. Um, next thing I learned, this is, one of my, this, is, oh, this is one of my favorites. If you are in good health, like good physical health, other stress bothers you so much less. Um, the only reason I made it through that training was because I was in excellent physical condition. They would just try and wear you down physically, and then once you're exhausted, little things would break you. But if you were fit enough, 
that you didn't get worn down, oh man, it's hard to break that. Like, if your body is free, your mind is living in your body and you can do quite a lot with it. Okay, um, next thing I learned is to really listen to your body because no one knows it like you do and ultimately you're the one responsible for taking care of it. Um, I fractured a hip falling during a, uh, it was like a nighttime hike, it was raining, we were on the edge of a cliff and I slipped and fell off the edge of the cliff and, and landed like right on my hip. Um, so aside from being extraordinarily painful, I just, I knew something was wrong. And of course the attitude in a training environment like that is no, nothing's wrong, we keep going no matter what. And I think that's a really useful mindset for a lot of things. Um, not particularly useful if your main priority is your long-term health, which mine was. Um, so I went to the medical on base. I finished all of the graded physical events. I ran the last PFT. It was my fastest PFT time. I was tied neck for neck with another one of the candidates. It was a thrill to run that PFT. And as soon as I finished, I was like, take me to medical. All done. <laughs> and they go to medical and they're like, oh, it's contused. And I thought, no, no, like I know better. I know better. And so I pushed. So then they took me to uh, Bethesda, a hospital off base, and they did an MRI instead of just the x-ray. And um, the MRI showed a fracture. I was like, I knew it. I absolutely knew it. So just listen to your body. Okay. Um, I haven't yet put together what my biggest takeaway was from this little tidbit I'm going to share. Okay, but one of the first couple days we were there, we were standing on line, which means you have all 60 with the staff sergeant at the head of the squad bay, and you're doing something that involves all of you being there, like taking attendance or showing that you're dressed or cleaning your rifle, something. And we're all there and we're going around and we have to phonetically spell our last names as part of whatever this roll call is, okay? Now, I did not realize that there is a set military phonetic alphabet, okay? So what I mean by that, for those of you who don't know, is that A is Alpha, B is Beta, C is Charlie, D is Delta, etc. okay? And everyone else was spelling their name with these words so when it came to spell my name, I just chose random words that started with the right letter. <laughs> and um, looking back, I mean, it's a cross between one of the most shameful and one of the funniest memories like I possibly can have. Because there were 59 other girls on the line just about losing their shit over how funny this was. Because here's the thing. Officer Canada School is a very rigorous selection process. Not a lot of the people who apply go there. So the fact that I made it to this point without realizing or having any sort of education or investment in the military system about this alphabet was like saying, I don't belong here. Um, which might explain some of the other difficulties I had during the rest of the process. Anywho, man, that, that was something. I'd love anybody's thoughts on that. Just, okay. Um, the next thing I learned was basically that as long as you don't die, everything's going to be okay. Um, you can look up the Quigley on YouTube. So the Quigley is a concrete tunnel, probably, I would say max three feet in diameter. And it runs... It's a, it's a bit of conduit that flows with the current in an extraordinarily muddy, disgusting river. And basically, they make you swim through it face up on your back with your rifle across your face, uh, muzzle up. And so you're just in this concrete tube full of mud, desperately hoping you come out the other side at like 50 degrees. You know, it depends how long it takes you to get through the tube. Some people had to have staff sergeants jump in and go get them, which of course really pissed off the staff sergeant. There's nothing they hated more than having to get in there. Like, please just get all your asses through. 
Um, no one had to jump in and get me, but not a fun experience. Um, so, but did you die? You didn't die. That's all I can say. All right. Um, the last takeaway, and I have saved the best for last. Um, the last takeaway is that you can develop and put on a command presence, and that's so incredibly useful in daily life. Um, I remember standing on the parade deck, you're pouring sweat, it's 105 degrees, it's a black top parade deck. Um, sometimes you just stand there for hours because that's like what they felt making you do or they didn't want to run. I, like Honestly, I would have rather run than stood, but anywho. So we're standing there and, and occasionally they'll just yell things at you, which can be helpful because it keeps you awake. Um, and the one female staff sergeant, Barnes was her name, and she was like Beyonce in a uniform with a little more muscle and a way louder voice, if that's even possible, okay? Um, everything about her was on point. She made drill sexy, and that's what she said about it, too. Anyways, um, so she was standing at the front, and she goes, you all are getting paid right now to receive something that other people go places like Tony Robbins, and they pay thousands of dollars to acquire the same thing. And one of the candidates had the audacity to open <laughs> her mouth and say, And Staff Sergeant Barnes was quiet for a bit, and then she go, she screams, and I'm not going to imitate the scream because I can't. I couldn't then. I can't now. I don't have that. Um, she goes, a command presence. You are getting a command presence. And oh, that, that sat with me. That resonated with me. And it's useful in so many scenarios, and I think it's a, a fundamental piece of how uh, animals communicate. I mean, it's useful when you're dealing with kids and you have to let them know who's in charge. It's the same, the same with animals, same with dogs. Um, I just, I don't know of any scenario where that isn't straight gold. And I'm so glad for that. And I don't have it all the time, but I can turn it on and off. So, those are the things I learned at OCS.